Hi everybody, welcome to my Minecraft Alpha tutorial. This is episode number 22 in a series intended to help new players find their way in Minecraft Alpha and learn some tricks and tips along the way on how to survive and thrive. Episode number 22, we are going to talk about switches, redstone dust and circuits, and TNT. So, three things that you can use to blow shpeep up. And let's get started, because we are limited for time. Um, switches. So, in Minecraft, there are three interactive switch types that you can create and craft and use to um, power certain things, and we are going to use them to open a door first. So, the first thing I want to do here is put a door up. And like a normal door, it just opens and closes with a, a quick, swift punch. Left hook, right hook, uppercut, or jab all work perfectly fine. Um, but we don't want to do that because we get bloody knuckles. So what we need to do is create some buttons. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a button. Um, we need regular stone, this type of stone right here, to create a button. Unfortunately, when I blast it with my pick, I get cobble. Cobble is not used for making buttons. However, we can use our furnace to smelt cobblestone down into back down into the regular stone which we just blasted from the wall here and that's what we need to make buttons and um, pressure plates so anyway the three types of switches there are buttons there are pressure plates and there is a, uh, a lever or lever depending on how you look at it all right I am going to take this out and let that stone cook and I'll take one piece out and show you how to make a button while that's cooking. Let's go over to the crafting bench. Um, yeah, actually I need two. Go to the crafting bench, take my regular old stone, and there we have it, a button. Yep, kind of like a Lego, but really it's a button. It does work, trust me. Take your button in your hand and go to your door and right click on a square a block adjacent has to be right next to the door and I now have a button press it just hit it and the door opens it closes pretty rapidly so it only stays open for a very split second and just like that if you're not careful you will smash your face directly in your door and close okay I just opened so it's either um, you know it's it's got a very short activation you hit it it opens closes I'm not a big fan of the button. Um, now, if you want to recover a button after you put it on the wall, you must use a pick. And the same goes for pressure plates. Because if you use your hand or some other device, um, it just destroys it. So make sure when you take that off the wall, you use the right thing, um, a pickaxe. OK, so let's make now a pressure plate. So there's my button. Buttons are cool but not as cool as pressure plates. Let's do a wooden pressure plate first. So take some planks. You do three in a row like that. And I'll just make, make a couple. And what happened to the other one? All right, so I have three pressure plates. Now a pressure plate is also an interactive switch, which means it provides power when you activate it. So it's an input device. When you step on a pressure plate, it opens an adjacent door. Now you can use these things to um, do other stuff too. You can toggle redstone torches. You can close doors, open and close doors. You can power. Uh, you can switch minecart tracks with them, and you can also power TNT or uh, ignite TNT. So there we have it. You step on it, and it gets depressed. Step off, pops back up, and the door closes. Depressed. Oh, so sorry, so sad. Depressed pressure plate. And off. So you want to cheer it up, just step off and he gets all happy again. Yay! All right, give that a blast. Actually, before I blast that, I'm going to show you how to. One trick you can do with wood, the difference between wooden and stone pressure plates is this. If you throw something on it, it'll activate. You can throw a stick, you can throw a log, you can throw pork if you wanted to, and I won't demonstrate that, but I probably will work, and it will open. Let's get that back, get my stone here, cobble, and now let's make a 
stone pressure plate, which is the stone that, it, that I just smelted. And it works essentially the same. Put it in your hand, right click, and it places. And step on it. Now this one needs something heavier than an item such as a block of wood. That will not activate. It has to be either you or well, a creeper can activate it. Um, even a, a little feathery spy chicken must be careful. Okay, so there's pressure plates and buttons, and now let's make a switch. Now a switch you can make, I'm sorry, a lever. A lever, you can use regular cobble, um, and a stick, and that makes a switch. I keep saying that. It is a switch. That's true. I'm right. I'm not wrong. But we call this a lever. And then you right-click it, and it has to be adjacent to the device you are attempting to power. And this essentially has an on-off state. So it's a toggle. On is, cl is closed door, or off, depending on how you look at it. And you switch the switch, switch the lever, and it sends its input signal and opens, closes the device. So on or off, just like that. That is a lever. Get my lever back. Now, on to the fun stuff. And it's starting to get dark. Um, let's go down here. I have some things prepared. All right, actually, let me show you what we can do with uh, redstone dust before it gets too dark here. Um, where's my redstone? Ooh. Redstone. Did I lose my redstone? That would be an awful tragedy. No. Got it. Let's go. Okay, redstone can be used as a um, to power, carry power to a device from your input. So let's put a switch here. Now, just like that. So this redstone is essentially like an electrical wire. You lay it down from your redstone dust. Just right click and put it down. I'm sorry, you guys probably can't see this. It's starting to get dark. And this provides the power, electrical power needed to carry the current. It's like a, it's like again, it's like electrical, uh, it's like an electrical current and a wire. If you break that somewhere, again, see, it only carries it so far. Now you can use any switch to do that. Out of the way, piggy. You're standing on my wire, probably chewing on it too. Pigs do chew wires. I've seen it happen. True, true story. Um, so that's how you can use that. Um, let's go grab some TNT. I'm going to make some TNT. La la la. Um, we need sand. Is that right? Yeah. So this is good old beach sand, not gravel. And gunpowder. We've got TNT. Now is where the fun begins. Dun dun dun. dun. All right. So now I've already got some of this made up. I'm going to grab that. And we can use our redstone dust to create, to set up traps and stuff. Really fun. Again, we want to blow sheep up. Now, this mountain here, not a big fan. I don't like this mountain. So what do we do with mountains that we don't care for? Well, I can think of one thing. Oh, hello. We blow them up. So, I'm going to show you how to, let's just put a piece of TNT here, right click. Now if I right click that again, it's going to set it off. So I don't want to do that, but what I'd like to do is create a wire. That doesn't matter, that torch. Now I could use a redstone torch to power that. Maybe I will at the end of this. And to make a red, did I make a redstone torch? I don't think I did. Now, you can only string this wire out 15 blocks. Um, after 15, it won't receive any more power. So you have to create a logic gate or some other type of uh, power stream somewhere in the center there. I, I'm not a huge fan of doing all this circuitry stuff. So. Um, I don't really know exactly how all of it works, except for the basics. So let's make a redstone torch. 
stick, redstone, redstone torch. Redstone torches can be used to provide power. Constant power. So when I hit this, there it goes. Blowy. See that pig? I know you're so excited. Alright, so that's that. Let me go back and collect my redstone. Hey look, coal. Um, now let's do one more thing. I don't want to blow this area up because I have plans for that. I really would like to set up a trap. Now, these kinds of traps only work once. and They make a big darn mess, but um, they are fun. Yoo-hoo! Spidey! Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, he does see me. Now, if I do this, I can put a pressure plate Bury that. You can use a switch too, but I can put a pressure plate right on top of this. And if he steps on that, it's going to blow. Or if I step on it, it's going to blow. Now the problem is it still takes a few seconds for it to blow, so even if he steps on it, he might be clear of the detonation blast radius anyway when it finally does go. So it's a little lame, but you can try to get, you can run on it yourself and try to Got to chase you like this, and ah, that didn't work out quite so well. Did you guys survive that? Yeah, well, survive that. Nothing like a good old diamond sword when your TNT trap fails. Just like in the zombie survival guide, swords. Never run out of ammunition or baseball bats or any other kind of melee device. Anyway, so there you have it. Some TNT, some circuits. You can do that too. You can set up some pretty elaborate traps. There's all sorts of mechanisms you can make to power um, redstone to carry a charge and blow stuff up or close and open doors and make traps. I don't get too um, involved in that. I'm more of an exploring type, an adventuring type, but um, hopefully the basics... I'm going to hit you with my redstone. And that's not going to be very effective. I would blow... I would set up another trap right here, but I have future plans for this in the next episode. I'm planning on building a mob harvesting trap right here. Um, so I don't want to blow this up. So there you have it. I think we're going to end it here. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.